hello again. So I did not want to check in until the relay was, till the relay happened, was done and over with, and we finally got to that point. So chapter one of volume two, these two cutie patooties finally held hands. I have been waiting for something to happen, and it took until volume two for it to finally happen. And it was really cute. They were all super awkward about it, which I like, I don't mind seeing. Maybe it's because it's relatable, but I was a very awkward teenager. Like, relationships kind of kind of scared me. I was, I, to this day, whenever I'm meeting a date for the first time, I always feel like I'm about to shit my pants because I get so nervous. So seeing them finally hold hands was, was really cute, and seeing them awkward about it was also really cute. And I feel like that's what a lot of teenage relationships are like, just from how I felt, and then stories I heard from friends who were actually in relationships. I will say, they, she really is dragging out this story, because that was a very long chapter. The whole point of the chapter was just to get those two to hold hands in the rain, so romantic, oh my god. But she is just, she's dragging it out a lot. So I, I do wish it would speed up a bit. So we finally get to the relay and we meet everyone's parents. Naho, we've already met them before. Suwa looks exactly like his father. Hajita looks exactly like his mom. We meet Azu's parents, who I can't remember what they look like. And then we meet, what do they call her? Chino is her last name, I think. I forgot the name they actually call her, but Chino looks exactly like her mother. And future Naho tells present day Naho like, try to do something for Kakuru. So at this point, Kakuru still hasn't told everyone that his mom committed suicide. So for all he knows, they think that she's still alive. So all their letters were essentially saying, um, like, try to bring some of Kakuru's relatives to this relay. Try to make him happy because in future Naho, her memories was that, um, Kakuru wasn't very happy. He was, I don't want to say jealous, but he he just was upset he didn't have someone there for him. So then you find out that Suwa's parents were actually able to pick up Kakuru's grandma and bring her to the relay, which I thought was really cute because of how happy he looked. And sometimes you just need that one person for moral support. And I think somewhere in this chapter too, that's when he finally tells everyone that his mom is dead. So throughout these relay chapters, like Kakuru is clearly depressed and who can blame him? I can't. Like he's seeing all these happy people with their parents while his one parent's gone. And earlier in the story, he does does make a point about how he doesn't really want to ask Naho out yet. He doesn't want to ruin their friendship. He plays it off that he's not jealous of other people that speak to him, but then you actually see in one chapter where Suwa gets hurt. So Naho just being the nice person she is is mending the wound. On Naho's part, it, there's nothing romantic about it, and you as the reader know that. However, Kakuru doesn't know that, and he actually starts to lash out at her, which we've never seen before. This is the first time he's ever done that to her. And, like, obviously, being the reader, seeing everyone's sides, I know there's more going on, but, like, even I was kind of taken aback by that. So, clearly, there's some jealousy going on here. And later in the story, that is confirmed for me, because Suwa and Kakuru get to talking. Suwa asks Kakuru, like, why aren't you just gonna ask Naho out? Kakuru makes a comment about how he doesn't want to hurt Naho. He doesn't really expand on that, but to me, that's basically him saying he's... Th he He's thinking about committing suicide, you know, given everything that has happened. But then Sua asked him, he's like, so you won't be hurt if even I ask her out? Which to me, <laughs> that felt like the wrong thing to say. Because it's obvious to everyone that Kakuru does have romantic interest in Naho, and Naho has romantic interest in Kakuru. So like, even without the letters and just common sense, I feel like that would be a shitty thing to say. But also, it's just the fact that like, they all have the letters like they know they they just I, like I was just so frustrated there during the scene I don't know how to explain what I mean by that but I just I, it wasn't Sua's intention to be cruel I kind of want to hesitate using that word but I do feel like it was kind of cruel saying that and especially because we know like future Naho is married to future Sua and even has a kid with him so like I guess to me one of the reasons I'm frustrated is that Suwa is still trying to get what he wants because at this point he still does have romantic interest in Naho. But at the same time, I feel like I have no right to be mad at Suwa because like, yes he wants to help his friend but Suwa deserves to be happy too. You see where my conflict is with saying that? I mean, I even without all this fucking drama I wouldn't say that to a friend like, oh you wouldn't mind if I asked your crush out. I think that's that goes against friend codes whether you want girls it goes against boy code it goes against girl code and like no matter what I just feel like that's a dick thing to do but however enough ranting about that you see why I'm frustrated with that because you do see um after the whole thing where she's mending where Naho's mending Sua's wound Kakuru does say like okay I don't I wouldn't because I guess Kakuru told Sua no of course I wouldn't mind if you asked her out and then he has like a little thought bubble after seeing that whole wound thing like okay maybe I would mind a little 
So at this point to me it's clear he's jealous if anyone shows romantic interest in her and she responds and by responding I just mean her being typical Naho being a nice person like not necessarily like in a romantic way and it hones in on the fact that he's in love with Naho too without explicitly saying it and I just want them to explicitly say it. So finally we get to the relay chapter which was I was a mess of emotions I made the mistake of reading this on the bus on my way to work and I'm sitting there with tears streaming down my face in the corner in the back corner of the bus embarrassing. It just hit me because during this relay they all had a message that they were passing on and just what the message said. Um, because like Kakadu hearing this is obviously like confused because he doesn't know what the hell's going on. We as the readers know what's going on and like we know what this message means. Um, I'm, I'll just read you guys the message. So Naho, so Naho and Kakadu are the last two. She's the one passing it on to Kakadu and she says, I have a message from everyone. Don't give up. It's a promise. We'll always be together. Even 10 years from now, we'll all be waiting, all of us, will be waiting. And she's like screaming it and it's really cute. So each person in the relay was tacking onto that message and the whole, and the part where it was Hajita who said it first, even 10 years from now is like what got me when I was on the bus and why I was crying because like, according to the letters, 10 years from now, Kakudu is not going to exist anymore. Okay, like it punched me in the gut. Like that was so... Bitter, it's bittersweet the word I want to use. Heartwarming, I guess, in a weird sense. It was bittersweet. It was heartwarming. And I'm just so glad these he has friends. Like, he's gone through so much. And just, I, I like, I, I love how the author's, like, just handling his depression and suicide. Suicidal ideation, I, I should say. I like how she's portraying the friends. I like how they're handling it as well. Because rather than just making fun of him, they're trying everything they can do to make him feel better. So that he knows he is loved and appreciated. And there was even, I didn't write this down in my notes, but there was one chapter, I forgot which one it was, where um, Naho and Kakuru were carrying this very, like, very heavy mat, and the others joined them. Yeah, it was a heavy mat, and Sua says, it's all right. We all carry it. It isn't so bad. Because essentially they were telling Kakuru, like, if you open up to us and tell us your burdens, tell us your worries, we'll have that on our shoulders too, so that way you don't have to carry all of that alone. And I, I liked how it was portrayed, how... He meant it literally with the mat because that mat did look pretty heavy, but he also meant it geared, to, he also geared it towards what Kakuru is going through and all that mental anguish he's feeling. And the best part is too that Hajita calls him out on the hurt lay because future Hajita talks about how he noticed it before but didn't say anything and as we know, past Kakuru, future Kakuru, I don't know how to word that, <laughs> but he did lose and he felt really bad about it. Present day Hajita got him to go get his leg checked out. He did and after that tear-jerking message that Naho sent to Kakaru, he ended up winning the relay, which is great because I know that was like a huge concern. They were scared that he wasn't going to win because he did it in the past, he did it in another universe and was upset about it, but now he won, so that is one less burden for Kakaru to have. It was really sweet because there's like a huge smile on his face, like we didn't really see Kakaru smiling throughout these past chapters. His grandma comes to congratulate him and there's actually a little story about how when he had a sports day as a kid, he wouldn't smile at all because one of their father just left and the mom was really worried. It was just cute because the mom, the grandma talked about how when Kakuru was a kid and won his race and that was the first time he smiled, his mom was proud too and then she tells him like, your mom would be proud. And I think he really needed to hear that and some other comment too because earlier Azu does make a comment like, when, don't you think your mom would want you to smile? And it, I'm glad he's smiling and I'm glad he got to hear someone tell him like, hey, your mom is proud of you. Just because he carries so much guilt about his mom's death. Like, we know he blames himself for his mom dying. So just hearing that the mom is proud of him, hopefully relieves some stress about that. And like, because he's, you know, he's convinced his mom's angry at him. So I just hope like someone telling him, hey, no, your mom was proud and she will be proud today helps relieve that because I truly don't think his mom would be angry at him either and I, I know that's easier said than it's easier I know it's easy to tell someone that but like really hard for that person to believe that I, so I'm I'm interested to see how the author is gonna take that because I don't, I don't want Cockery to blame himself when that is no one's fault especially not his her literal child and then the chapter ends with the relationship progressing because there was actually like a bet earlier that like if Cockery wins um, Naho's gift to him is a kiss or something. So he won and he sneaks a kiss on the cheek. He kisses Naho's cheek and she obviously like freaks out about it. He's like, okay, I got my gift. 
thanks and you know skedaddles you know Jimmy Neutron got a blast and the chapter ends with Naoho thinking the future has undergone some major changes and us the readers know the major changes because we know that in another universe her and Kakadu didn't like do that at all like they didn't really have a progressive rela romantic relationship and yet here they are kissing each other holding hands kissing cheeks so you know shit's gonna go down especially with her relationship with Sua because now I feel like that's in peril I kind of kind of want it to be in peril because I don't want them to end up together right when he kisses her I'll hold it up but Sua here looks like flabbergasted but then here he looks like genuinely happy so I'm intrigued about how that's going to go because like Sua has to know in the future he is married to Naho with a kid like his dream came true so he has to know this puts his dream in peril but I've said in the past he's a great friend for still continuing to do what he's doing to help Kakuru. So judging by that smile, I'm going to assume he's going to continue being that great friend and not getting in the way. But I'm very interested to see what the future holds now. We only have this much left. I don't know y'all. How is this going to go? So I've read three chapters. However, so much happened in those three chapters that I feel like I need to update the vlog before continuing because I do have three chapters left. So they're trying to make plans for New Year's Eve, but Sua claims he's too busy that day. And Chino sees right through him. So she asks the truth and Sua is refusing to tell her. So she just outright says it. Her future self, in her letter, it says that Sua actually confesses to Naho on New Year's Eve. He confesses his feelings and that's kind of like, that's kind of when they started dating. And the other plot twist to that is, is that Kakuru and Naho actually get into a huge fight that day. That's why she was crying and he went to comfort her. He is in Sua want to comfort her in the first place. So reading that left me very worried. Worried for how this is going to turn out because Kakuru is just such a sweet boy and Naho's just so... Like, she's grown so much since this chapter. However, she still is very sensitive and I could see her... I, I, I This ended up happening. I predicted what actually happened. Um, I predicted that she was going to, like, say something not meaning to be rude. Kakuru was going to take it wrong. He was going to yell at her while she just stood there, like, didn't fight back. So it's like, so I predicted it to be a one-sided argument, and it, that's what it ended up being. And this chapter basically ends with Chino telling Sua he shouldn't put his happiness aside either. And granted, actually, I do believe she has a point because I have to, it, you have to wonder how much of the future they're willing to change and what's actually gonna happen because now yes they may be going through all this shit with Kakuru and avoiding those regrets but does this mean they're gonna make future regrets like if Sua doesn't confess to Naho are they gonna get married and have that kid is the Sua of this universe gonna regret not saying anything to her so I think those are valid questions and like obviously I love all these characters and as much as I want Naho and Kakuru to have whatever thing they got going on I want Sua to be happy too. Future Sua talks about how if he like never how did he wear this exactly if Kakuru did not die she would never have married him and I did find it interesting that future Naho said she would have despite liking Kakuru. I don't really know what my final conclusion of that character development is like other than Naho always wants people to be happy I think I truly do, do think she would have done whatever she could to make both of them happy but it just makes me wonder if we will see that with our with our present day universe like you have two guys that like her so i'm just gonna go out of, uh, go out on a whim here and say that kakuru is not gonna die in this universe because that th th these types of stories typically have a happy ending so it makes me wonder how she's gonna handle two guys liking her and if the present day naho would have that same mindset like if she would marry sua anyway. So on Christmas Eve, Kakuru flakes out because his grandma was sick, which is important because at least to New Year's Eve where they all meet up at the shrine and Kakuru is late. So Naho mentions to her friends that she's supposed to have a fight with Kakuru because what happens and what happened to the future versions is that not knowing anything about Kakuru's mom and his grandma, she told him he should wind down for a bit for a couple hours. Kakuru told her, what do you know, and said, you know nothing, never speak to me again. And apparently they didn't speak much after that, and he died before she could apologize. And at this point, reading about that, I thought that was kind of out of character for Kakuru. 
and we will get to that. Sua's not there because he's worried about confessing to Naho and he has decided not to do it. So while on the phone, it's Hajita actually who brings up the fact that maybe they shouldn't change the entire future because now everything they're changing, they're doing it at the expense of other people's happiness. And his example was the relay race because, you know, Kakuru won first place, but that meant whoever was supposed to win one second. So don't you think they would have been happier to win first? But no, Kakuru won, meaning we, like, we tarnished someone's happiness. And it was Hajita who told him, like, you shouldn't put your happiness aside just to make Kakuru happy because you deserve that happiness too. Which honestly brings up a very good point. And at this point, I, you know, I do really feel bad for Sua because what, what do you do? Like, he's close friends with both Kakuru and Naho. Future Sua even brings up the fact that he was the only one who knew both of them liked each other and yet he didn't do anything and future Sua does regret not saying anything, so it's like, is, is present day Sua making a smart choice, or should he put his happiness first for once? And I, I don't, I honestly don't have the answer for that. I personally do not know what I would want that outcome to be, because I, that just like sucks for everyone. Like, obviously you don't want to steal someone from your friend, but like, you don't want to lose the girl either. So meanwhile, Naho and Kakuru do end up having that argument. She was able to avoid it for a while. I did, she, what did she say exactly? She said um, something about unwinding for a couple hours, and I did notice that Kakuru gave her the same look he gives her in the other universe, and I felt my heart pounding at this scene because I was so worried for how it would turn out, and it unfortunately turned out the way I didn't want it to. He ended up laughing it off and apologized for making it so, so for making it so serious. So what? Naho ends up saying and like us as the reader we know she had good intentions because we know the future along with her but obviously Kakuru does it she ended up saying like your grandma's going to be okay you should hang out with us for a couple hours that's the whole reason he wants to go home is to spend time with his grandma who was sick so Kakuru you know not knowing what we know understandably got kind of upset and he said what do you know there's no way for you to know that and obviously Kakuru's in a very sensitive place and then he unfortunately tells Naho to stay away from him don't ever speak to him again and I felt really bad because the way those panels were drawn out of Naho crying hurt my gut and I felt that and I felt so sorry for her because she's like in love with this boy it hurts when the person you're in love with is mad at you you know but I still thought this was off for Kakadu. He's never reacted like this in the past, so I was very iffy about it. However, it still sucks. Turns out Sua was at that shrine the whole time, so he goes up to Naho to comfort her, so I'm thinking he's gonna confess. However, he does change it at the last second, and rather than saying, you know, even if you guys don't talk again, so I guess in the other universe he says like, if you guys never speak to each other, it's, it's okay because I love you, I will be there for you, something along the lines of that. In this universe, he says, I will bring you guys back together, and never confesses. I still feel bad for him because, like, Hajita is right. Like, how much of the future are people willing to change? Because just, just because you're, I was going to say, I don't want to say deleting, just because you're getting rid of other regrets or preventing other regrets does not mean you're not going to make new ones. So what does Sua's future have in store for him? So the chapter ends with Naoho calling Kakuru, hoping to have like a second chance and to apologize so she at least doesn't regret that. However, we see Kakuru see the caller ID that it's her and throw his phone to the ground so hard that it breaks. And during the countdown, all the friends look upset and Naoho also questions if this is the turning point. She questions if Kakuru is going to kill himself because of her. Which after seeing how Kakuru treats himself regarding his mom, I don't want Naho to, f to blame herself either because it's 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 such a sh it's such a shitty situation but it's not her fault. She also questioned if there's just some things you can't change and I thought that was an interesting thing to bring up in the story because the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once brings that up like no matter what universe there were some aspects that would always happen or always be important to you so I do wonder if this manga is going to explore that. So the last chapter I read is basically um it's essentially Kakuru's life or what would have been if this group did not receive their letters. So he does not join the soccer club. We find out his mom threw away all his stuff. He meets those friends he does not meet in this present day universe and they're all dicks. He, he told them he's thinking about committing suicide and they laughed at him. So we actually did see his suicide attempt. We see him refusing psychiatric treatment no matter how much his grandma begs him. We see him blame himself for hurting his grandma because she did look pretty upset about that. So that's like a newfound guilt that he has. 
throughout this chapter, he's refusing to open up to those friends. And then th he, there's even a panel where he wonders if they laugh at him. And it's kind of like side by side with the friends that do laugh at him. So that was really sad because we know they wouldn't. In this universe, Sua confesses his feelings to Naho and Kakuru is genuinely happy for him. There is no jealousy. So I guess that that would answer what would happen if it if something like that shit like that happens in the present day universe. The part that gets me is how this chapter ends. So it ends with Kakuru of this universe finding his mom's text messages. His mom had this she never sent it, but she had this whole letter written out just apologizing to him for think for being impulsive because that was his problem with her. She was very impulsive and would do things without consulting with him and think about how he felt. And she says the words like in the future, I'm going to let you choose what you want to do. I will speak to you. I, I'm sorry for being a burden. So I'm thinking, okay, these are the words that Kakuru needs to hear. Like, she's basically telling him it's it's not your fault. But unfortunately, that's not how it goes in this universe. Kakuru essentially twists the situation in his head. He, what he twists it to make it seem like it's his fault that she felt like a burden and he blames himself for making her life so bad. One, because one example was being that she left the, she left the father worried because he was abusive to her so she was worried he'd be abusive to Kakuru and then he makes that out to be his fault and it's just it's just so unfortunate that he's reading the words he's always wanted to read and yet he's still twisting it to make it seem like he hurt his mom. We do see the fight that happened in that other universe and after he exploded on Naho he does think to himself oh my god I hurt Naho that's why I don't want her to speak to me again because I don't want to hurt her again. So that's what I meant by I was suspicious by this behavior because I'm like that's kind of out of character for him to just not speak to her ever again because he likes her too. Why wouldn't he speak to her? So this chapter actually answered that question for me. It's not because he genuinely hates her. It's because he loves her so much he's scared to hurt her again. Which I feel like is a callback to something Kakuru said earlier because he told Sua he doesn't want to date Naho in fear that he will hurt her. And in a way yeah he did hurt her but like she was willing to move on and, and you know she took the blame too. She was willing to move on and apologize and he wanted to apologize as well so it's just it's just a heart heartbreaking dynamic we don't actually see him die the author did not draw that out if anything it's just like an all-black manga panel with some words and his last thoughts because earlier he saw Naho with a box of Valentine's Day chocolates and it was a gift to someone and his last thoughts were wondering who she gave those to and his last words in this universe was but it doesn't really matter and it's just it's, and he's crying and it's just so heartbreaking to me that you have to be in like such a dark place where even if you hear the words you want to hear you still twist it to make it out to be your fault like you think everyone is hurting inside because of something you did and more than half the time you have no control over and it's also heartbreaking that you know his last thoughts were still Naho showing that he really does love her it, it just makes the words like never speak to me again hurt even more and this is just what happened in the other universe so I'm interested to see, I'm glad we got that insight to see what actually happened in the other universe that, you know, the future characters, were, the future versions of the characters were so scared of. So I'm interested to see how it's going to take place in the present day universe. I'm actually worried for how this is going to end and there's only three chapters left. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed. I, I probably won't check in again until I finish this book. Too much happened in these past three chapters for my heart to handle. I'm, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just so worried. There's going to be a lot of crying involved between... Sua, Kakuru, and Naho especially, and I know Hajita, Azu, and Chino are gonna have their moments too, and it's... I, going into the series, I didn't think it was gonna be as emotional as it is, and it's hard to believe at one point I had no desire to read this, and now I'm loving it, and but I'm also scared to keep reading, because I'm scared, I'm scared to know the outcome. Uh, hi! So it's December. I finished this book in July and I was going through my footage and I realized I never actually filmed an ending to this video. I never told you guys what my thoughts on on Orange was. But let me just get right to it. Right off the bat I just want to tell y'all those last couple chapters, especially that last one, I sobbed my whole way through. I was, I, I like knew Kakuru wasn't going to commit suicide just because of the way these stories typically go. But I was still, which is a sign of great writing, I was still so scared he was going to do it. And I was scared for all the friends. They were panicking. I was panicking. I was crying because of how much they love Kakuru. I was crying because Kakuru was crying. 
there was just so much that went on and how each person did their individual part. Like, Hajita even thought it was a good idea to break the bike because in the, so like in the other universe, he took his bike to, to the, whatever called, to the truck. Whereas in this universe, he can't because the bike's broken. But like the bike being broken helped him a little bit because it was able, that bike being broken warned the others that Kakuru's not home, but he, he must be missing. He must be on foot. And it, so as mad as I got at Hajita for doing that, and they were telling Hajita not to do it. Like, Hajita was still smart for that. And it just killed me reading about Sua asking Kakuru, like, what were you doing? Why were you doing that? And what killed me the most, and I'm feeling myself tearing up, because Kakuru was supposed to just stand there and get hit by that truck or hit by that car. But what actually happened was that Kakuru immediately fell to the ground and the car drove over him, which was really scary. It was scary to see that in the artwork. You know, Sua was asking what happened and Kakuru was like, you know, I realized how much I love you guys and how much you guys care about me and, like, how much I don't want to die. I don't actually want to die. I still have so much to live for. Going into this, what I was expecting, I was expecting, you know, like Sua and Naho to kind of run across the street and push Kakuru out the way. I think the reason I love this so much and what got me about that is Kakuru, at the end of the day, I mean, his, like you could say his friend saved him, but at the end of the day, he's, he saved himself. No one had to push him out of the street. He decided for himself he wants to live, and that's why he fell to the ground saving himself. I think that is a, an amazing way to tell the story, and for me, as someone, you know, who has to live a life with depression, I have my friends who are always by my side, but it's good to know that, you know, I myself can help myself as well. And god, the artwork, and like, when I read manga, all these characters have their own voices in my head, and like, I, I guess I should be like a voice actress or something, because I can imagine Kakuru kind of like screaming with his voice cracking as he's telling people what happened, and I like want to, I, I could not see the panels because I was crying so hard, and I'm like, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. And I just want to talk about how amazing that scene was, but I don't want to repeat myself, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what an emotional journey. And then I was crying even more because the other four came running, or the other three I should say, Chino, um, Azu, and Hajita, and they were all crying as Kakadu was telling them the story. I'm crying, so I'm the, I'm the seventh person in this posse. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> Something I just adore so much about this story is that it is his friends and how they stayed with him the whole time. They stick by him even during his lows. Because oftentimes when I read stories about mental health or then like when you, even in just real life, people say they want to help you. They say they, you know, they understand mental health. They want to break the stigma. But there's a difference between someone who's like high functioning depression and then, you know, they can hide it really well versus someone who is showing it. Some, like, mental illness during its lows it's ugly and people are uncomfortable around that they don't want to be around you so they want to help you until like you're actually experiencing the worst parts of mental illness his friends stick by him during the worst times they stuck with him during his tears they stuck with him during his outbursts and then they stuck with naho too during all that as well like they never betrayed each other they always try to help each other as much as they could. So then at the end, the story basically ends with them finally doing the, the time capsule. Kakuru believed about the letters, and that was another part that made me cry. He was like, how did you guys all know about this? And they introduced the letters, and he believed them. And then, you know, he was crying about the fact that their, their future selves wanted to save him so badly, and then I'm crying again. In the last panel, I was kind of confused about what I was seeing, just because it it looked like future Naho and Sua, but then Naho passes by a guy who you don't really see his face, but the way he's drawn, I, I kind of inferred it. And it was an, it was an adult Kakuru, but Suwa didn't really see him. He just kept walking. So I interpreted as the, the universe with our older characters that we met and grown to love. And it was like, it was the future Naho seeing what could have been and then, you know, being excited about the, the younger Naho making these changes. So that's how I interpreted it. It was so, it was bittersweet because it was, I was sad to let these characters go, but I was just so happy seeing Naho being happy and just being able to see that adult Kakuru and having hope. And then the story ends, there's a letter from Ichigo Takano, and then next to that letter there's like more side panels that aren't necessarily part of the story. But the last one does show an adult Naoho with an adult Kakuru, like, but like his back turned to us. So that's obviously in the in the other universe. 
it, it like it was I was just so happy because it's just so good to know that he does he does make it he does make it to adulthood they truly did save him oh my god and the last letter too destroyed me it was basically like we're always gonna be with you to save you no matter how many times it takes and I just I think we all just need friends like that and it's just it's so nice to see care oh my god I'm tearing up holy shit it's so nice to see character so loved like that and someone going through all this bullshit and his friends are willing to help him. And then Ichigo Takano's letter too destroyed me. It said, I don't have the, I wish I had the book with me, but I had to return it to the library. But it basically said, maybe we can see each other again, even in another universe. And I was like, oh, oh, and it makes me think of that line in Avatar The Last Airbender where Toph says, do you think friendships can last more than one lifetime? And I feel like that's the theme of this story. No matter which lifetime it is or no matter which universe, there's always those people that you need and that that will help you and that will love you. And I, I just hope, I know this is fictional, but I, like, I hope, it, say we did live in a world where that was a thing. Like, say there are parallel universes out there. I hope the me of out there has those friends like all my friends here are also my friends in those other universes or if I'm not friends with someone here but I still love them in a sense that we're friends in those other universes which I know sounds really corny I'm getting really corny cheesy and emotional but that's what this book did to me my memory card is full so I have to switch to my phone but something I actually kind of found interesting about the story is that in the current universe in the present day universe you never find out who Naho ends up with because at the end her and Kakuru aren't official yet who knows if they'll ever be official and they're all still good friends. And as much as I wanted them to be together, and I kept saying throughout the vlogs, like, oh, I hope they kiss, blah, blah, blah. I'm okay with this. I'm I'm actually okay with not knowing. And in a in a sense, I think it's I think it's better that way. They still need to get to know one another. And now that Kakuru is alive, they have a whole lifetime to do that and figure it out for themselves. I did end up giving this volume five out of five stars because like, I mean, if you make me cry throughout that whole chapter, I had to lay down for a good few minutes as I just sobbed in my pillow. <laughs> I stared at my ceiling, and not really my pillow, I was literally in my bed on my back staring at my ceiling while I sobbed and wished for friendships like this. I was so upset when the book ended because these I feel like all these characters became my friends I created a parasocial relationship with everyone in this book and because I grew so attached to these characters I didn't want to let them go and I was so I was actually upset in a, in a way when I ended the series because that my I had to close the book and you know never never see them again which obviously blah 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 you know I could always reread the book whatever but it, it there's rereading and then there's just experiencing all of this for the first time again. This is definitely one of those series where I would do whatever I can to experience it for the first time again. I, I to, like again, I finished the series in July and I'm still crying thinking about it. I still miss all these characters. I really didn't I really didn't want to let them go. And I still, I, you know, I really didn't let them go. Like, they still all hold, like, a very special place in my heart. Especially Kakuru. That, that boy. I, oh my goodness. I cannot imagine how attached I would have been to him if I read this in high school. What an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. I laugh. I cried. I was angry throughout this entire series. And what a way, what a fucking banger. That's, that's the true thing of what I have to say. What a fucking banger. This was a really fun vlog to film. This was a very fun story to, to, to read. This is definitely one of my top books of the year. Thank you, Ichigo Takano, because I will never forget this experience. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, y'all know the drill. And without further ado, I'm gonna peace out and I'll see you guys later. Ciao, Tutti.